stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop posting your pictures on Facebook or Flickr or 500 pixels or any website with those two horrible words. It is not helping your photography. One of two things always happens. Either you get your ego stroked or some idiot tells you your picture sucks because he thinks there always has to be separation of the subject and the background. Stay tuned and I'll explain to you what you should be posting if you really want help improving your photography. And if you're an experienced photographer, I'm going to explain how you can give feedback that will resonate, educate, and inspire. Hey gang, if you want to be entertained or you're looking to be wild with some cool DIY gadget or technique, sorry, that's not going to happen in this video. So you've been warned. If you're really serious about improving your photography or helping others to do the same, I have some awesome practical advice and straight talk for you. Let me give you a little background. For years, I've watched photographers posting photos online with the caption, CC welcome. For those of you that may have missed it, CC stands for constructive criticism. Of course, the irony is that when the criticism is posted, one of two things happens. Either the photographer strikes back and defends his or her choices, or the comments mandatorily state that such and such is wrong and should be changed because it's a rule. It is impossible to gather good information that will help you improve your photography that way. The fact of the matter is, most people don't know how to give good constructive criticism. Full disclosure, I read an article this week on fstoppers.com about this very subject. Now I want to be clear, I'm a big fan of fstoppers and the author of this article. I've included a link to it in the description below because I think that it is well written and makes some excellent suggestions. But by the author's own admission, it is written from the perspective of how to give constructive criticism, not how to ask for it. Many of you know that I started a Facebook group for photographers several months ago. When I launched the group, I made a commitment that it would be different. In fact, so different that I actually expected it to fail because I didn't think people would put in the effort. To my surprise, the group is flourishing and growing at a very rapid rate with members from all over the world. So of course, now you're asking, what makes it so different? What makes it different is how we ask for and how we deliver constructive criticism. Let's start with the posting of photos. Photographers are not allowed to just post a picture and say, CC welcome. Each post must contain details. Yes, the basic shutter speed, aperture, lens, ISO stuff, and also lighting, types of gear, modifiers, placement. But that's not the important stuff. All that technical crap is just reference data. The important part of the post is where the photographer explains why they took the picture. What was the intended purpose of the shot? Is the photographer happy with the shot? How about the subject, were they happy? If it were possible to revisit the scenario, what would the photographer do differently to improve the photo? And lastly, photographers are encouraged to ask specific questions regarding their own photograph so that those viewing it have a sense of how they can best help. You see, the point is that if you just slap a photo on a wall, you're asking a person to make a snap judgment based simply on the aesthetic of it. The science of cognitive psychology teaches us the human brain is incapable of providing an unbiased opinion that has nothing to do with what legitimately makes a photograph good or bad. By providing all of this information and then asking for review, you're framing the discussion around your experience or lack of it and giving the reviewer enough information to be able to actually help you based on their experience and knowledge. Back to the Facebook group. When people comment on photographs, they are encouraged to not comment first, but to ask questions first. Questions that will help them achieve a better understanding of what the photographer was trying to achieve and also what the skill level is of that photographer. I found that more often than not, a photographer will wind up solving their own problem as they answer the questions that are asked of them. So here are my six tips 
for making sure that you receive usable and well-informed feedback on your photography. When you post an image looking for constructive criticism or constructive feedback or critique, start with a brief mention of your experience level. Don't be self-deprecating, but do be honest that this was the first time you used off-camera flash or that you've only worked with a few models, whatever the case may be. Provide all the technical details, shutter speed, aperture, camera, lens, ISO, lighting details like types of flashes, placement, power settings, modifiers. The more detail, the better. Hey, if you're enjoying the video, please take a second and hit that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And when the video is over, if you really enjoyed it, please share it with your photography friends. I'm counting on your support to help grow this channel. Explain why you took the shot. Was it practice? Was it meant for a client? Were you trying a new technique? Don't be that person that posts a photo looking for feedback and starts the post by saying, I was just messing around. Why would you want feedback on something that you were messing around with? Are you happy with how it turned out? How about the subject? Did they like it? What would you do differently if you could do it over again? What are you hoping to learn by posting the photo and asking for feedback? Be specific. Saying that you're hoping to learn how to improve your photo is only going to invite those biased opinions. I know this seems like a lot of effort to put into getting feedback, but if you're serious about improving your work, don't you feel it's worth the effort? Or are you just too lazy? And that brings me to another point. Stop asking for confirmation that your work is good. Look at it yourself. Be honest with yourself because half of those people pressing like or commenting online are not being honest. They're being polite. And the other half know as much or less than you do about photography, so how is that helping you? Now, if you're a photographer who is willing to share your knowledge and experience, first of all, let me say bravo. Here are a few tips for you to be sure that your effort has a positive impact. Ask before you speak. Understanding will always lead to better feedback. Even though I've outlined a better way to ask for feedback, many people will still post photos without providing background information. If you offer an opinion with little to no understanding of the situation, you are likely just adding to the problem. Be flexible. Remember that just because you like something, that doesn't mean that another person has to. So when making comments, it is important to remember that the only right or wrongs apply to physics. Everything else is an opinion, and you should phrase your remarks accordingly. If you don't have actual experience relating to the photograph that you are commenting on, don't spout off something you read in a book or saw in a video. By all means, mention that you have seen articles or videos talking about the topic and suggest to the photographer that they check them out but don't pass off the information like it's a rule because you read it somewhere. Be detailed. Yes, giving constructive feedback is actually a lot of work. So if you're too lazy to do the work properly, don't do it at all. Webster's Dictionary gives the example of constructive criticism in their definition of the word constructive. They explain promoting improvement or development. If you are going to give constructive feedback, understand that sometimes that means you're going to have to tell someone that their photograph sucks. But you can't say it sucks. You need to be polite yet honest. You need to give plenty of reasons and details as to why, and more importantly, offer helpful suggestions and guidelines as a way for them to improve. And most importantly, you must provide encouragement. Without the encouragement, constructive criticism is just criticism. I'm a firm believer that helping others in their pursuit of becoming better photographers is a way of promoting the greater good, and that helps us all become better. So until next time, gang, remember, your best shot, it's your next shot. So keep learning, keep thinking, and keep shooting. Adios. Thanks for watching. If you find these videos helpful, please give them a thumbs up. 
and share them with your photography friends. Be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And if you have a question that you would like answered, post it in the comments section below. Your question could be my next video.